Hi, hello everyone, it's Wheezy Blonde. If you were unaware, I attended SummerSlam this weekend and it was quite the experience. I've never been to a pay-per-view before, I'm sorry, premium live event. I've never been to a premium live event before. I've never been to that big of a wrestling event before. So I was definitely a fish out of water and I have a lot of thoughts about how the weekend went and what exactly happened. If you could do me a huge favor before we get rolling, please hit that like button, subscribe and hit the bell for notifications so that you can be informed every time I make a new video. We are on a roll lately, let me tell you, look at us go. I had every intention of vlogging the whole experience, but I was having a lot of anxiety and I didn't do as much as I planned. I am going to include some of the clips of us arriving to the stadium, some fun little things that happen. Here you are. Hi, hello, this is me. We are trying to do a SummerSlam vlog today, but I'm not used to vlogging and I'm not very good at it, but I just wanted to give you a so little sweaty. bit of a look of like what a I'm dealing with at the moment. Yeah. Yeah. We have Cody with me here. Today, the only person keeping me sane at the moment. But I've got some other familiar faces behind me. We're currently waiting to get inside and go eat or at least drink. I need one or two or three before I deal with anything going on today. So join me on my adventure as we go to SummerSlam. We did also drive up on Friday and we went to a free meet and greet for Seth Rollins and Rhea Ripley and um, they were both late to their meet and greets. We stood in the sun for a good three hours. I have sunburn on my hair part. I didn't actually really get to meet Seth Rollins. It was my husband's mowing the lawn right now. He picked a really good time to mow the lawn. I really get to meet Seth Rollins. I got to stand next to him and take a picture. And I hate the picture. It was very rushed. I was sweaty. I was hot. I basically said hi, stood next to him. They're like, hurry up, take a picture, take a picture, go, 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 and, and walk away. And so she snapped five pictures on my phone. My hair was in my face. I moved away. So only one of the pictures was doable. And I feel like I look like a chubby 12 year old in them. So it's fine, whatever. But I didn't really get to meet Seth Rollins. I got to stand next to him. I am newer here on YouTube, so maybe this doesn't quite make sense, but I was dealing with a lot of imposter syndrome. I was around other creators and for lack of a better explanation, a lot of TikTokers, creators, YouTubers, whatever, what have you, definitely have an air of confidence about them. I definitely see myself as a normal ass person. I don't make a lot of income doing this. It's still a hobby, part-time income, part-time side hustle. I am very passionate about it and I have high hopes to do more in the future, but I am not about to prance around a premium live event and act like I am somebody. And I definitely never want to come across on camera like I think I'm somebody. I am literally a fucking hairstylist in South Bend, Indiana. Um, I live in an old house, like, uh, okay. Whatever. But I get why some people are that way. So <laughs> so I drove up to SummerSlam with my husband and we stayed with a friend. We stayed with, God, I don't even know how many other people, creators, like five-ish, I believe. And that was fun. You know, it's always fun getting to hang out with people that have a uh, like mindset as you because no one around me really watches wrestling. I don't really have anyone to talk to about it with. Now, when it came to the actual show, we were all seated separately. So I was sitting with my husband. My husband and I uh, were sitting in section 103 and I originally was in section 140, but we moved it because I didn't want to be behind the entrance ramp. And I'm, I'm glad that I did. The only thing I would say about my section is I didn't feel like the energy in it was super hype. But if you've read anything on the internet, you might have heard that the energy wasn't that hype in general. It really depended on where you were. I personally felt like the energy in the building did not meet my expectations. I expected it to be louder. I expected there to be more chants. The chants were more isolated to certain areas. Like around section 131, you could definitely hear more of the chants going on. I am a Detroit Lions fan. I've been to Detroit many times. I've been to Ford Field many times. The Lions are my team. So I was really excited to see Ford Field done up 
like a wrestling event. I was excited to see the ring. You know, it felt like being at home. It felt like having a wrestling event at home. But it was definitely crazier than a Lions game. It was really difficult to get around. Um, People definitely didn't know where they were going. It took a really long time to get into the gate. The line was wrapped all the way around the back of the building. I'm not really sure what the holdup was there. So I was really, really on edge. I was super on edge and I hate that about myself. I think I hide the fact that I have social anxiety very well, especially when you work behind the camera. It's really easy to put on a persona and you have time to pause and think and recollect yourself. And when you're, you know, out in front of people, you just are who you are and you're giving your energy for hours at a time. And it's really hard to find a place or a moment where you can really like hang back and recoup. So... Let's get into the actual matches and the actual show. I knew that Logan Paul and Ricochet were going to be first up because Logan Paul had said on Impulsive with Seth Rollins that he planned to be at his brother's boxing match in Texas right after whoever won. Now, Logan Paul won. I really did enjoy this match. I felt like it took people a minute to get into it, but as far as athleticism goes and how they were in the ring, I thought it was incredible. They're both so super talented. I know people have a lot of opinions on Logan Paul, but Logan Paul really does belong in the WWE. He was made for this. He's an entertainer by nature. His job is literally to get the heat and he gets it. I particularly loved the the carrying on of <laughs> bringing attention to Samantha having to announce Logan Paul as the winner. I don't really know what to expect for the both of them after this match. I know I just saw announced today that Logan Paul is going to be having a boxing match with somebody. I don't feel like looking up who that was, but it's with somebody. I don't watch boxing. But yeah, overall, I really love the match. I don't like to rate matches. Um, I just, you know, I just want to tell you what how things went as we go along. Moving on to Cody Rhodes and Brock Lesnar. Brock Lesnar's my boy. I love Brock Lesnar. I was super excited to see Brock Lesnar live in person. I was super excited to see Cody Rhodes live in person. I hated that I love both people that were in this match because I didn't know, I was cheering for both of them. I wasn't, this wasn't one of those matches where I picked someone to boo or that I felt there was a particular heel that I needed to be booing. Uh, (laughs) So yeah, maybe the people around me were a little confused. I don't care. It was a little bit of a slow start, but I understood what they were doing. The continuous count outs, you know, where Brock is throwing Cody out of the ring and then you're getting to the seven count and then Cody jumps back in and doing it over and over again. It very much was giving a predator playing with its food, playing with its prey. And I adored that. It got me a little more invested for the ending of the match. Brock Lesnar's shorts shredding apart mid-match. I don't really know how that happened. I've never seen that happen to him before, but I thought it was hilarious. <laughs> Ending of the match, we know Cody Rhodes won. Good for him. This is the end of their saga, end of their story. I think the moment at the end of the match, having Brock and Cody shake hands and Brock showing sign of respect to Cody Rhodes was a really, really nice touch. I really liked that. I appreciated that. I have this small hope in the future that perhaps down the line Cody reaches out to Brock for help when it comes to maybe defeating Roman Reigns in some way. This is me completely spitballing at the wall, but I do hope that we can see some showing of kindness between the two of them in the future. I love Brock Lesnar. The Battle Royal. I did not anticipate to enjoy the Battle Royal as much as I did. I didn't necessarily know what the purpose of it was, but I think I'm seeing now the purpose literally was to give LA Knight a bit of a rub. Uh, Before the match officially really started, when they announced Omas, I died. I tried to do some reaction videos with a, with a, um, with a microphone to catch my reactions, but the audio was just absolute trash, which sucks. But I laughed my ass off when Omos came out. Uh, Omos Sapiens rise. My husband's also not a wrestling fan, so there's a lot of people on the roster he doesn't know. He does not know who Omos is. So when Omos was coming down the ramp, my husband was literally like, that's a big dude. Like, he's a big dude. And we're, you know, we subsequently laughed our asses off again when Omas was swinging his leg over the ring. He looked massive compared to everybody else standing in that ring. It was super funny and the immediate knockout that he had. But yeah, I was super involved in this match. Various moments where I was cheering for different people. I really wanted Gable to make it further in the match. I'm loving Chad Gable right now and I think he's doing super well. I am ecstatic that LA Knight went over. Uh, At the time of that, I'm recording 
recording this, Monday Night Raw already did happen. So I saw what happened last night with LA Knight. I'm hoping really good things for him in the future. And I think that they are headed in a really good direction with him. <sighs> Shayna Baszler and Ronda Rousey. I actually didn't go into this thinking it was going to be what it was. I, I expected a lot more. I, I expected a lot more from, from the both of them. But from the very get-go, just there was no energy exuded in this match. Uh, nobody was into it. I am not about shitting on performers when they're in the ring, but there were chants happening. Uh, again, over in the 131 section, they were really hype. I know the sections because I love Ford Field. But over in that section, oh my God, they just were chanting, this is boring. And I just felt god awful Shayna went over it didn't really feel very important everyone was super quiet in there you could hear a pin drop there's not a whole lot more to say about it I know Ronda Rousey apparently isn't planned to come back to WWE anytime soon I, I don't really care I hope that Shayna moves forward and does good things Gunther versus Drew McIntyre I wasn't as into this as a lot of people were it was a good match don't get me wrong. I went into it definitely on Gunther's side that Gunther was going to be winning. It was a good match, but it just, it really didn't pull me in as much as I would have expected it to. I don't have much else to say beyond that. Uh, I will say my section wasn't really into it either. The crowd was a lot quieter for this match than they were Cody and Brock, Seth and Finn, which we haven't gotten to yet, but they were definitely a lot quieter. I hear a lot of people saying different things, like I said earlier, about the crowd and the volume of the crowd. And Ford Field is really large. It's enclosed. Maybe that has something to do with how the audio carries, but uh, I thought it was particularly quiet during that match, considering how big of a caliber match it was. I do still think that Gunther and Drew are going to have a feud moving forward. They might just take a little bit while to get back into it. Seth Rollins and Finn Balor. A lot happened in this match and, and I knew that a lot was going to happen, but I didn't know exactly what direction they were going to take. I predicted that Seth Rollins was going to win solely because I didn't think he was set to lose the title yet and I was correct. I did, however, think that Damian was going to at least try to cash in the briefcase and start some kind of conflict. However, I like the direction that they went instead, that Damien didn't. And instead, you know, now Finn can blame Damien for being there trying to help and causing all of this discord that they have now. I think it's great. I like the, the, um, the discord within the Judgment Day. I think it's a really good move to make. I'm happy that Seth is still champion. I mean, and now, God, again, I watched Monday Night Raw, so we had Shinsuke Nakamura, you know, turning on Seth Rollins last night after the win at SummerSlam. So I have no idea what is in store or what the plan is. It seems like they're kind of taking a break, focusing Finn and Damian on Seth, even with the tag match. And I love that I don't know. I love that I have no idea what direction they're going. And we got this lovely meme from Damian Priest that has blown up, and I love when we can get some wrestling memes. <laughs> the triple threat women's match for the title. I'm so disappointed with the women's matches on the card. I'm really disappointed with the women's matches on the card. And I try not to dwell on that because it happens and it was still a decent pay-per-view. I don't think it was the greatest SummerSlam of all time, but the women's matches being lackluster definitely carries weight in how I felt about the pay-per-view as a whole. I keep saying pay-per-view, premium live event. I don't know what to call it anymore. I felt that the triple threat women's match was a slow start like many of them. People really were not into it for the majority of the match. Uh, the kid that was sitting next to me, I think he had to be between the ages of like 16 and 18. He was like sitting back eating his Hungry Howie's pizza. And at one point he just was like, I just want this to be fucking over with already. Like he was kind of a buzzkill, but I didn't disagree with him. You know, I was trying to be into it for the sake of loving wrestling, but I'm watching this like, okay, let's, let's, let's do something. Let's have something happen. Like what is going on? The, the best spot of the match was definitely Bianca's injury. She sold it super well. The scream, the curdling scream, you know, it's good when people in the audience are really trying to question whether or not she was really injured or not. Uh, her hobbling back to the ring, getting in. I was not happy when she won. And I hate that that's my reaction. I, I did want Charlotte to win before the cash in. But the idea of Bianca having another reign right now, when I really wasn't invested towards the end of her last reign, it just felt like they were going to be repeating something. And then Eo Sky's 
music hit. And I completely forgot about the possibility of a cash in. I, I just, I don't know why that didn't cross my mind. When Bianca won, I was like, okay, here we go again. And then EO's music hit. And it was a very, very good moment. I'm super excited for her. I hope that they take her in a good direction and they don't waste this cash in because sometimes they will give the Money in the Bank winner the title and then they, they just let them fall flat. I hope that that's not the case. I would like to see EO Honestly, I would like to see EO in a feud with Asuka. I think that would be great. Unfortunately, I feel like Asuka's reign didn't do her justice. Asuka is such a great talent. She deserves so much more than she's been given. All of her title reigns thus far on the main roster and all of the storylines and things that she's done to me don't feel very memorable. I feel like the most memorable moment on the main roster for Asuka right now is uh, Becky relinquishing the title to her when Becky Lynch was pregnant. As beyond that, I can think of her dominance in NXT and that's what I think of when I think of Asuka. Asuka was that bitch. She was dominant. She's strong. And for some reason that just hasn't resonated on the main roster yet. And I'm hoping maybe a feud with Io Sky will do that. Even though I know people are talking about the possibility of a Kyrie Sane return, I'm I'm with you on that as well, but we'll see what happens. And the tribal combat. The tribal combat, Roman Reigns versus Jay Uso. I wanted to be more invested in this than I was. It was a good match. It, it was a good match. Don't get me wrong. Really enjoyed honing in on Paul Heyman's expressions during the match. I, there weren't super memorable spots for me until they got out of the ring and Solo got involved and everything that happened thereafter. The one thing I've seen other people talk about and that I, I have questions about myself is just the the interference, it being tribal combat. I know that we'll get an explanation on that possibly Friday. The main thing I know, the main purpose and the main reason to talk about the match in general is just the turn by Jimmy Uso. The amount of different opinions and things that people are saying about Jimmy showing up and turning, you know, and there were a lot of people that were like, why would Jimmy be helping Roman? I, I don't think that that's what's happening. I don't think that that was the case. I don't need an answer right now. I, I don't need to know why Jimmy Uso did what he did at SummerSlam. He's going to tell us, you know, the Usos, you know, Jimmy got a big mouth. He's going to show up on Friday. He's going to tell us exactly why he did what he did. And we're going to get an explanation from there and move forward. That's, you know, what people have to do. They have to speculate. They have to complain. They have to whine because they don't know things right now. They don't have an answer right now. You're going to get your answer. Chill the F out. I personally think it's a great move. It carries on the bloodline story without keeping it too stale because I don't think that it's stale. A lot of people are saying they're done with the bloodline story. It's it's too repetitive. It's this and this and this. And how is it repetitive when you just had one of the Usos break up essentially with the other Uso? Now you have all four members of the tribe that are basically feuding with each other. How is that not keeping it fresh and keeping it different? I don't think that it was time for Roman Reigns to lose the title. And I don't think that Jay was the one to take it off of him. I don't think he should have been the one to take it off of him. Overall, my thoughts on SummerSlam itself, I left feeling let down. I, I think I had too high of expectations and I'm not an overly critical wrestling fan. I don't like to be, but I think I feel this way anytime that I go to a live event. I definitely anticipate and expect so much more. And when the energy in the building or the energy of those around me doesn't match how I'm feeling, it definitely does ruin it for you. There's a different experience seeing it live in person and seeing it sitting at my setup from home where I can kind of gather my own reaction and not feed off of what other people are thinking or saying in the crowd. Another huge difference is not being able to hear commentary and not being able to hear the ring mics. When you are watching live, you're in the crowd and you are just watching the action happen. You can't hear the dialogue between the uh, talent and you can't hear what the announcers are saying. Those are two really important components, I think, to WWE television. So when we got back to the place I was staying, I did watch through most of the pay-per-view to hear what was being said. And I think that it was a much better better viewing experience watching it from home. It sounded quieter from the TV as well. But like I said, Ford Field was a little more tame than I had expected a Detroit crowd to be. I, I've been to a SmackDown at Little Caesars Arena and that was a crazy show. 
this just didn't have the energy. I checked Ticketmaster when I was still sitting in my seat to see how many tickets were left to be sold by scalpers and whatnot, and there were still a lot of seats available. From what I saw on TikTok, there were a lot of people that bought last minute tickets that really aren't wrestling fans or that were wrestling fans in the past. So there were a lot of people in the crowd that have no current knowledge of professional wrestling or what's going on on WWE television right now. What we have going on in current WWE television is we don't have the legends showing up like they used to where someone could attend a show last minute and still at least know somebody that's there. Maybe another part of my irritation and my let down feeling of SummerSlam is just the internet wrestling community, journalists, whatever, talking about returns. There was so much hype up for a return because there's always a big return at SummerSlam. I mean, and what we got was Omas and Jimmy Uso, which no disrespect to them, but it was not the caliber of return that the internet had been talking about. We had heard rumblings of Randy Orton. We'd heard rumblings of The Rock. And none of that happened. And I feel stupid for having a part of me thinking that it was a possibility that it was going to happen. We really need to stop putting stake in a lot of online journalists. I'm sorry, because so many of them will say this is happening be prepared. It literally happened the day of SummerSlam, but they were like, not to spoil too much, but there's going to be a big return tonight. Like, stop. What's your source? Guy in the back, janitor in the back that overheard something, my pet rock that heard this say this, per like, shut up. Regardless, I'm glad I went to SummerSlam. I love Detroit. I love Ford Field. It was really nice. I feel like Detroit is my city, even though I don't live there. And it was really cool to see wrestling fans taking over the city, walking around with their belts, doing the woo chants. I'm glad that other people got to see Detroit. There were so many people that flew in. I think Detroit has a bad rap from the last 20 years and they've definitely changed their scene a bit. They've changed their downtown area. Detroit is really a cool place to be and I'm glad that other people got to experience it and see what it was like. Thanks for checking out my thoughts on SummerSlam. If you have any questions, definitely leave them down in the comments below. If you were there, let me know what you thought of the show. I'd love to hear what you have to say. As always, thanks for sticking around. My name is Weezy Blonde. Take care. Love you. Bye.